Contrarian investing is a fascinating investment approach where investors intentionally defy mainstream market trends. Contrarian stand apart by selling when others are buying and buying when majority are selling. We will explore a few examples of stocks and funds that align with this approach and discover how investors have multiplied their wealth. We will also explore the basis of identifying such contrarian stocks. This approach has worked during a full market cycle of boom and bust by focusing on downside protection. Stocks are bought when the strong companies go through temporary challenges, thereby they are bought cheap. This provides downside protection. In this example of upside versus downside capture ratio, if the market comes down by 100, these stocks are already at a discount and hence they correct to a lesser extent. When the markets go up, they capture almost all. So they make money by falling lesser. That's the key approach here. If you look at the three funds listed in the contra space, they have considerable history. Since this approach works over a full market cycle, if we look at a 10 year return, these funds have generated 17%, 19% annualized return. On an average, the category has returned 17.5% per year versus 14% of Nifty. That's an outperformance of 24% over the index. Of course, it does not assure similar success in future and hence any investment must not be based on this. Instead, it must be based on your individual risk profile and life stages. I'm pinning a video in the comment section. So how do you select companies in this contrarian strategy? First, companies in a turnaround phase like l &T or United Spirits or Axis Bank. When Amitabh Chaudhary joined the bank, he was known to be a turnaround expert. And since then, the bank has significantly improved its performance and the stock price. Second, companies quoting below their intrinsic value. Market sentiments and investor pessimism causes them to sell and prices fall below their intrinsic value. Examples, SBI, NTPC and Reliance Industries. Third, high growth companies which are currently derated. There is nothing wrong with their balance sheet, sales or profitability. Example, HDFC Bank, which derated due to the overhang of the merger with HDFC or Infosys, which derated due to the overall negative sentiment around the IT sector. Four, companies that are beneficiary of a business upcycle, like Indian hotels. Post COVID, a lot of people are traveling and staying in hotels. There is a huge pent up demand that these businesses cater to. In mutual funds focusing on contrarian investing, they go overweight on such companies and sectors like today, IT is a contrarian team and funds can have an overweight portfolio of these stocks. The PE of IT sector, which denotes how expensive or cheap a sector is, was 34 in December 21. Today it has fallen to 25. IT is 5% therefore overweight as compared to the benchmark. Whereas it was an underweight position when it was expensive. Similarly, consumer discretionary sector is relatively cheaper today at a PE of 35 and the fund is overweight by 4%. Compare this to the PE of 40 two years back when the fund was underweight. Some sectors like metal are better valued using price to book ratios. Cement is EV by EBITDA. So between sectors, we look at relative valuation. Some sectors such as energy had the highest PE of 16, whereas in consumer staples, the lowest PE itself was 36. We see therefore that PE is a relative measure and differs from sector to sector. So the comparison has to be done on its own historical average or the sector's PE. When the stock market does great for some time, it will eventually have a bad phase. However, people's optimism and greed make them believe that the recent success means more good times ahead. This is when downside protection becomes key and contrarian investing provides an option. 
If you like this video, please do consider subscribing to this channel, like and share it with your friends.